Good afternoon. I'm Jay Arts Executive Director Laura Mandel, and it's great to be here with all of you for our first ever JLive event. JLive is our new series of virtual cultural experiences that bring us together to explore and celebrate the diverse world of Jewish art, culture, and creative expression. We're bringing you bite sized conversations with the best Boston area talent. Today, we're excited to kick this series off with incredible artist Karen Tab, a mixed media artist who just began painting a few years ago, and you won't believe it once you see her work. We were proud to have her uh, be part of her first solo show in 2018 called Of Two Places, which spoke about her Israeli and American identities. And it's been a delight to watch her career evolve over the past few months. If you have questions as Karen speaks, please share them in the Q&A section that's at the bottom of the screen, and I'll share as many of the questions as is possible and as time allows, and we can also continue the conversation by email afterwards. Now, you are in for a treat. Karen. Thank you. Welcome to my studio here in Newton, um, my messy studio. This is how I work, my creative process, which is super, super messy. Um, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Jay Arts. Uh, plug for a very incredible organization that is making Jewish arts um, what it should be and could be. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you for inviting me to kick off this session. Um, a little bit about me. I was born in, uh, in South Africa. I was raised in Israel and have lived in the U.S. for the last 20 years. Twelve of them were in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, and the last eight um, have been in Boston. Um, as Laura mentioned, I uh, was not always an artist. Um, I was a nonprofit professional. I uh, spent many, pretty much my entire career in the nonprofit world, working both in Jewish organizations and in non-Jewish organizations. Uh, deeply rooted in issues of social justice um, in, and caring for the communities that I belong to. Um, my art, after an unexpected move to Boston, um, I faced a major identity crisis and picked up a paintbrush and have not looked back. Um, my art practice evolved from flat canvases, painting, to gradually off the um, off canvases, both um, uh, off the sides and coming off the front of canvases, where I found that sculptural uh, mediums uh, spoke more to my aesthetic and to my, uh, my love for creating with my hands. So as my uh, practice evolved, my technical practice evolved, so did my voice. And I have found that uh, art is an extremely powerful tool to amplify the voice of, of um, uh, for issues that I care about so much, uh, whether they be mental health, um, immigration and immigrants, um, racial inequality, gender issues, of course, Israel, poverty, homelessness, and um, and the arts. Um, so I want to share with you some of my. Um, older pieces as well as um, some recent pieces as obvious to everybody. Everybody's responding to COVID right now and so have I been. Um, but a, very much a, in terms of a, my Jewish lens and a twist towards the issues that I care about so much. So the first piece I wanted to highlight as we um, enter the month of mental health awareness is a piece called um, Father's Day 2016. And um, this piece, um, um, this piece is really a homage to uh, my son and my husband. Our son battled a bout of major depression and as he was coming out of it and we were looking at the other end and he was regaining his footing we were on a call with him and it was Father's Day of 2016 and I had just finished this painting. Um, and uh, he said something that was so profound and made my husband cheer up, which doesn't happen often. <laughs> and I knew that that was the name of this painting. I often don't give my paintings titles until they're finished. 
almost like a birth of a child. Um, you kind of have to wait to see who they are and what they look like, and then uh, really realize that the name matches the painting. Um, so I have used my art um, over the last uh, few years as a way to amplify um, the voice of those who are lacking access to mental health. One in four people in the US uh, struggle with issues that are uh, around mental health and uh, in many cases, lack of access to adequate care. Um, so that, that's kind of an old painting, really, as you can see, a flat surface. Um, and it was a launching pad for me to really begin moving off the flat surfaces. Um, over the last few months, after the sticker shock, well, not sticker shock, the shock of COVID, um, I began uh, using newspapers to talk about um, the issues that I care about as they relate to COVID. Um, what is becoming very obviously and having a spotlight shun on it mm -hmm. is, are the issues of racial inequality and um, uh, the, un, um, I, uh, the, the percent of African American and Latinx people who are being affected and dying disproportionately affected in our community. Um, this piece, um, I think, is going to be titled um, uh, COVID, uh, Spring of COVID 2020. The weird thing that I've felt uh, over the last couple of months is as we've all been locked down and locked in, nature has taken a life of its own. Uh, trees are uh, turning their leaves, where there's new growth, there's a certain amount of um, rebirth and excitement. And even in our own home, I've been lucky to have my kids home for this uh, quarantine and it's been pretty amazing. And um, so it's been great at home, but the minute you step out, life is horrible. And um, people are dying and people are suffering and losing their jobs. And so there's this weird juxtaposition. And for the last three months, I've been clipping newspapers um, around issues that I care about so much, about the disproportion of mortality of African-Americans and uh, Latinx um, members of our community, about uh, homeless people having to live in shelters or in, in prisons where um, they're dying in, uh, in numbers that are totally disproportionate and unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. And um, the first layer of this painting was really um, the, I had in mind the burning bush, um, the sacrifice of Isaac, and um, the idea that we as a society with all of it in its inequalities are in many ways have put people um, in harm's way. Um, and in many ways, uh, sacrificing. Um, another piece which will be in my upcoming solo show is this something of a totem um, of found objects. I'm an avid junk collector. In fact, I go dumpster diving often in um, building sites for jewels and gems of pieces that I can find. Um, the name of the exhibition is going to be called Betzele Melohim, question mark, or in the image of God, question mark. Uh, my sense is that we've strayed very far from um, the intention of uh, is, uh, the, are we good people? And what does it mean? Um, and so um, this is one of the pieces that's still in um, work in progress, uh, but does beg the question of looking into our soul and trying to figure out who we are and what kind of people we are and what we can be, how to do better. And the show is gonna be in hopefully April, 2021 in Boston and uh, hereby extend an invitation to you all. I hope you will join me when that happens. Um, the piece that I wanted to um, show you next 
is uh, really speaks again about this um, dichotomy of what we're experiencing now in terms of um, death and rebirth. Um, so many people have had quarantine graduations, quarantine birthdays, quarantine weddings, and this idea that we go between um, uh, good and bad um, while at the same time watching Netflix and eating popcorn um, in, in, in big numbers. So, um, so that is um, one of the pieces that um, is uh, responding to COVID. Um, uh, in my next, in my upcoming show, I uh, will be uh, making 18 um, Sadaka boxes. Uh, this is a kind of a demo of one of them. Um, over the last uh, two years, I've been um, on my, in my travels and wherever I go, uh, and both local and international, I've been meeting amazing, amazing women who are doing incredible work in our communities uh, in terms of social justice. And um, I've been interviewing them about the stories, their stories and why they got involved in the work that they do, whether it be volunteer or professional. And I'm gonna be building their tzedakah boxes. Each one is gonna be a different tzedakah box. Um, and um, uh, as Ruth Messenger told me, she had this dream once of having a tzedakah box that was made out of plexiglass that would be fit, that would be sit in the front of the MoMA and people would be able to put money in and so I'm going to build Ruth Messenger's box. I hope you come uh, to see it. Um, please be in touch. If you are uh, interested, um, we printed catalogs for um, the solo show that I had off two places which really spoke about my immigration story and what it's like to be an immigrant um, speaking two languages, belonging in two places or never belonging at all. And um, all the proceeds from these catalogs went to support the Boston Immigration Network um, that accompanies immigrants uh, out of um, incarceration here in Boston. So if you want one, let me know. I'll be happy to send you one. Um, I, I would love to take any questions from you, um, if you have any, if you have any um, ideas, input, questions, I would be more than delighted to take them from you. So, Laura, I, I um, send it back to you. Absolutely. So I have some questions. First of all, um, thank you, Karen. I could sit and listen to this all day. And as you can all hear, she has a hundred different projects with just incredible themes and content. Um, and Rebecca in the Q&A, like me, is actually very intrigued by your use of newspaper. And she's asking specifically, um, are you coding them or spraying them and selling them? These are all things you and I have discussed. So I'm actually going to broaden the question slightly um, and say, talk to us a little bit about your use of newspaper, since I find it to be fascinating. Um, so, um... I'm going to pull out a piece right now under the table, Shuki, as a pillow that I want you to pull out. Um, so um, particularly in this time, uh, I feel that we are witnessing something beyond imagination. And I, I feel a need to almost chronicle it. And for me, the best source would be um, newspapers. Um, so uh, one of the things that I do is, and I'm going to show you a pillow that was part of a uh, piece that was in my previous show, and this was in Hebrew and English, Israeli newspapers and, um, uh, and Haaretz and New York Times. I do coat them. I try and prevent them from going yellow. And then I either stitch them or glue them onto um, another substrate so that they have some kind of longevity to them. They have some kind of um, uh, strength so that I can manipulate them. They're almost this incredible material because they both tell a story as well as offer um, themselves. They're, they're, um, they're, they're a storytelling medium that is, uh, has a life of its own. And so I'm really attracted to the newspapers. That's great. 
And, and generally, a few people have now asked about materials otherwise. Since you went, I mean, what was it, seven years ago you started painting and now you do this incredible sewn, mixed media hodgepodge of things. Can you talk to us a little bit more about some of the other materials you use? I mean, I know for me, I'm specifically thinking about chicken wire and maybe linoleum. Tell yeah. us. Yeah. So I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a moshav in Israel and um, pretty resourceful. If a pipe breaks and you need to fix it, so you find tape and you, you tape up the pipe. Or if um, you need to plug a hole, you figure out how to plug a hole. And so there's something very industrious about um, using my hands. Um, I, I'm not even sure I'm an artist. I might be more of a maker or something in between. And um, materials kind of tell me a story of what they want to be. Uh, so I made a bed out of chicken wire because um, there are immigrants right now in incarceration on the southern border who have a no bed or a behind a fence. But also it goes back to my childhood where I used to collect eggs from a thousand chickens every day after school. And it was part of who I was and the materials that I used. Um, that's just, the materials are, are pretty incredible and, um, and I'm not afraid of trying to figure out how to make them work for me. Um, I, um, another piece that, uh, that Shai, my daughter, just brought out from um, the garage is this piece made out of um, uh, tags, luggage tags um, that are, um, have been sewn and stitched together. And so they both have um, their own drawings and the mark making is pretty spectacular. Um, but then they're attached to a, um, a chain, a rusted chain. Um, it speaks mostly to my going back and forth to and from Israel and how it's still a heavy load and it's chained me to who I am and to my identity is really um, chained to the place that I came from and where I lived most of my life. Um, so um, I look at things um, and objects more as what they might offer me and less so in terms of what they currently are. It's yeah. beautiful. Mm -hmm. I will also note one of her other pieces from the show that that piece was in, the Of Two Places, involved dirt that she right. schlepped back from Israel with her. Right. <laughs> so there's, a lot, there's a lot of materials. Um, we are coming up to the end of time, but um, you've touched on a few pieces that are about Israel and your Israeli and American identity. Can you show us or talk to us about one more piece that really is representative of Israel and your Israeli identity? Um, uh, yes. Um, the, you want to pull out the chili over there in the back. Um, so, one of the most significant pieces that I labored uh, over a huge amount was this a giant tallit. It was over 10 feet long and stretched from the ceiling. Um, and um, um, the, Shai, it's on the floor, that one in the bag. The, the tallit for me is this piece that you wrap yourself in reverence of God and um, in, uh, in this humbleness of being in the present, presence of other people who are praying uh, together. For me, the Talit also meant that it was an opportunity to reclaim what we as Jewish people, um, I think, stand for. It is, I took, um, I took Emma Lazarus's poem, and I stitched it on this giant piece of tallit. And um, uh, it is the poem from um, the Statue of Liberty. And when you wrap yourself in her poem, um, and you think about what she meant, and our responsibility as Jews to immigrants, um, I feel that this is uh, my voice, and this is our calling, my calling, and this is my art voice. And so I hope 
that um, you join me on this journey um, in finding our voice together um, as Jewish people, and particularly in this art form that I'm showing you today. Um, yeah. Is that the piece you had in mind, Lauren? I, I absolutely had that in mind. And we have a request from someone who says, if there's time, can I see the flag piece? I think it's behind you. The flag piece. Oh, so this is, um, this is a, a mock-up of the flag piece, that one over there, um, which uh, there were two flags. One of them was a chuppah, turned into a chuppah that was made out of my Israeli and American um, flag um, as a symbolic marriage of my identity. The other flag uh, was on linoleum, as you mentioned, and had a um, golden suitcase and barbed wire on it. And that was really symbolic of my um, uh, really uh, ill feelings about what is going on in terms of uh, immigration in the U.S. right now. And it is called, uh, is this what our founding fathers had in mind? Um, it is in the catalog. I'd be happy to send it to whomever um, and really love to show it to you uh, in person. It's not hanging. It is giant. Um, but this is what they all started from. I love it. And I, and I love how Karen turns everything into something else creative. So it is hard to believe that 20 minutes have already blown by. Um, I know some of you have further questions, including a request, Karen, to hear more about your Sadaka boxes. So I have put it in the chat that the show will be um, in April 2021 at the Beacon Gallery in SOA. I will be sure that you all get information about it well before then. Um, and I don't think I'm presumptuous if I ask Karen to come back and share a little bit more about this Sadaka Box project as it evolves. Yes, perfect. Absolutely. I would love to. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me. Um, and, um, and if you're so inclined, I would love for you to support an organization which I find very near and dear to my heart. Um, J Arts is doing uh, an incredible incredible job in terms of elevating uh, what we, what I see and many of us see in the community as an opportunity to uh, re-engage with our Jewish identity through the arts and culture. Um, Jewish arts and culture is, uh, is having a revival as it should have and J Arts is really leading the way. Um, and I'm grateful for, for you inviting me to, to speak here today. I really am. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, a virtual round of applause. <laughs> of course. Um, so also, I just want to remind everyone that this uh, Monday Art Days are part of the full J Live series, which includes music on Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock. We'll be kicking off tomorrow night with Anthony Russell, an incredible Yiddish singer who is a classically trained opera singer. You won't want to miss this. Um, we're doing art every Monday. Music will be alternating Tuesdays and alternate Fridays will be food. And we are kicking off on May 15th with Chef Avi Shemtov of Simcha, which is um, the delicious Israeli restaurant in Canton and of the Chubby Chickpea food truck. And I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you all this publicly, so don't repeat it, but Avi has a new concept restaurant coming our way, I think later this week. So. I hope you tune in for him as well. Um, like Karen said, if you loved what you see here, um, every penny matters to us. I have put the donation link in the chat and you are welcome um, to click on that. And of course, uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. If you love this and you want to see more, our handle is at jartsboston. Um, and thank you all so much for joining us. Have a wonderful have week questions? and we hope we'll see you again and again. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'd love to answer them. Thank awesome. you. Thank you for joining everyone. Have a great afternoon.